Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do your June the 17th just for today in a meditation. I hope you're doing well this morning. Let's go ahead and get into the meditation. The title of today's meditation is Walls. Reaching out is the beginning of the struggle that will set us free. It will break down the walls that imprison us. That comes from the basic text, page 83. Many of us came to in a, in a emotionally shattered. Years of using people and allowing them to use us had taken their toll on our ability to trust anyone, ourselves included. But the love and acceptance we found in Narcotics Anonymous encouraged us to reach out and get close to others. The longer we stayed clean, the more we began to long for greater intimacy with our loved ones. We began reaching out in deeper, more meaningful ways, even though we might get hurt. Despite our fears of rejection, we decided to risk revealing ourselves, our beliefs, and our needs. We decided to let down our defensive walls. The freedom we found has been worth the risk involved. We know there is still work to do before we will be completely free of the barriers built by years of active addiction. But by reaching out to other addicts and allowing them to reach out to us, despite our human failings, we have come to know that we have a great capacity for love and intimacy. When set free of their restraining walls, our hearts hold great power. Just for today, I will let down my personal walls and reach out to others. I will allow my heart the freedom to love and be loved. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the Wii version of Serenity Prayer. A moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change. The courage to change the things that we can. And the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. Walls. I think that this particular wall that this meditation is talking about um, is personal. It's one that a lot of people choose not to deal with until they have to. And usually the have to means uh, desperation. They don't want to use. They're having um, the urge to use. They basically don't want to go down in flames. So they reach out to someone. Because we've always said, call me before you pick up. Right. Sponsors have said, call me when you're having a good day as well as a bad day. Because if you learn how to call on a good day. When you're having a bad day, the phone won't seem so heavy. So I think sometimes, as I've said before, it's quite natural for a person that comes into the world by themselves, right? And I'm not talking about parents raising their children. I'm talking about the, the natural act of being born into the world. We come into the world by ourselves and we leave by ourselves. It's quite natural to want to be self-sufficient. They have a whole diagnosis for people that are dependent throughout life, right? If you look at the triangle of self-obsession IP, in so many words, it says addicts are different because 
Usually a baby is born into the world, it cries and it knows that its needs will be met, right? I'm paraphrasing. But with addicts, where the baby starts to grow up and learn that it can meet most of its own needs, an addict, we kind of stay in that, right? We stay in that position of wanting to make sure that not only that our needs are met, but that hopefully they're met by other people's finances, right? Or other people in general, so that we can continue our use without impacting ourselves in those areas, right? We're impacted physically, but the point is, is that in the triangle of self-obsession, when we're talking about you know, the um, the disease of addiction and how it manifests in our lives. Generally speaking, a normal child is going to grow up and begin to learn how to meet its own needs. But for some reason, with us, we have that tendency, it's natural, but when it comes to this area of being able to reach out to people, it's almost like we're in a deficit. We've become so used to operating in this manner of using that if it's not self-serving, right? We're generally, uh, in regards to using, we're not going to reach out to people because that would cause too much exposure. However, what we find is that when we come into the fellowship, it's still very complicated for us to reach out to people for the right reason. Maybe that's how I should put it. It's complicated for us to reach out for the right reasons, the right motives. We seem to have it convoluted with some, uh, you know, some sort of manipulation and control and getting what we want when we want it. We might reach out, but it's not usually for the right reasons. And this meditation is talking about being able to do that. It's a struggle and it's admitting that it's a struggle, but we need to start practicing reducing our defensiveness, our judgmental thoughts, our suspicion of others, our, how about this one? Our belief that we are not worthy of love and intimacy. Because a lot of times, we don't reach out because we are expecting to be rejected. And I've experienced rejection here and there, but it, wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with me. It didn't have a single thing to do with me. It had everything to do with the other person feeling convicted about me needing them or reaching out to them when they've hated me all along. Right? It didn't have anything to do with me. It had everything to do with who they were. And so I just figured out when I get that kind of response, that's just one recovering person. That's just one person. There's all these other people. Get the phone numbers and start reaching out. So today, I would encourage you to come away from the type of reaching out that is manipulative. And at this stage, you probably can recognize when you're operating out of an impure motive. And start letting your guard down. Start letting those defensive walls down. And take baby steps and start reaching out to other people. You don't have to reach out to everyone in the room. Just one person. Pick two. And you probably have them in your phone as their first name and then N-A like I do, the first name and their last name is N-A. 
So I can type N-A usually. My phone is giving me trouble, but I could type in N-A in the context and all of the people that I relate to in that way will come up. Go through your list. And how about this? If you If making the phone call is too much of a reach, text them. Happy Saturday. Hope you have a beautiful day. This is so-and-so. Yeah, it can be a form of encouragement too, right? For them as well as ourselves. Family, my name is Mighty Stream. I hope you enjoy this meditation today, working on those walls and bringing those barriers down. Have a beautiful day on purpose. I intend to, and I will be talking to you soon.